Hi everyone, I'm so glad to be here again. I love it when we come together here at IES Kids Online. I'm super excited about this month because we're talking about how we can stand up and face our fears. We just need some courage. Courage is being brave enough to do what you should do even when you are afraid. Raise your hand if you've ever needed some courage in your life. Yeah, me too. I needed courage when I moved to a new country and I didn't know people, I didn't know places, but I needed courage that time. Some background stories of superheroes in the movies started with them being a normal, powerless people hunted by a terrible past which made them feeling lonely, scared, and weak. In the Bible, we can also find some people with the exact same condition. But God raised them, gave them strength, and helped them to be a superhero of faith. We will learn more about this in the Bible story today. Now, please stand up and give glory to God through our worship time. entering a new month and this month is the month of November where we will uh, explore more about our superhero theme right it's fun look we have Iron Man and Superman and something like that why, why do we have to uh, look at these superheroes what 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 are they doing you know that they have courage in their life right 
they, they have these uh, brave hearts. And that's why we will also look to the brave people in the Bible. We have lots of stories of brave people in the Bible. So we are going to continue God's big story together as we look at what happened with these God's people, the Israelites. You might remember that God promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, right? Abraham's family grew over many generations and along the way, they became known as the Israelites. We have seen how God rescued the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Last week, we saw how God made a way for them by parting the waters of the Red Sea. The people traveled through the desert toward the land God had prepared for them, which was where Abraham had lived so long before. Along the way, God provided food and water for the people. God also gave them rules to show them how to love God and love others. Finally, the people arrived at the land of Canaan, the promised land. This was about two years after they had crossed the Red Sea. The leaders of the Israelites was named Moses. God spoke to Moses and told him to send some men to explore the land. God said, send some men to check out the land of Canaan. I am giving it to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of Israel's tribes. So Moses chose a leader from each of the 12 tribes or different groups of people that made up the nation of Israel. Moses told these 12 leaders that he wanted them to explore the land of Canaan. He wanted to know what's the land like? Uh, are the people who live there strong or weak? Are there a, uh, just a few of them or are there are a lot of them? Is the land good or bad? What kind of towns do, do these people live in? Or, or, or do the towns have high walls? Is the soil good for growing crops? Are there trees? Oh, and see if you can bring back some fruit. So for about six weeks, they traveled through the country. The men saw the places where Abraham and his family had lived hundreds of years before, and they found some fruit that they could bring back like Moses had asked them to. They cut off a bunch of grapes that were so large it had to be carried on a pole between two men. Wow, imagine how big the grapes are. After 40 days, it was time for the 12 men to return to the Israelite camp. The men reported to Moses and the rest of the Israelites. They explained that the land was good and full of milk and honey. The fruit was incredible too. They were like, check out this, these grapes. But the news wasn't all good. The men had seen that the people who were already lived in the land were powerful and their cities had high walls. They were like, oh, we're so scared. Well, I should say most of the 12 men were scared, but there were two men who trusted God and were not worried about what they had seen. These are brave people. These are our superheroes for today. Their names were Joshua and Caleb. Caleb interrupted the other men and said, we should go up and take the land. We can certainly do it. But again, the other men said that the people who live in the land were too strong. These men spread a bad report among the Israelites. They said, we're like little bitty grasshoppers compared to these people. These people will just step on us and we'll die. Something like that. Ooh, I bet you can imagine what happened next. The other Israelites totally panic. They listened to the man, the 10 men, who said that it was hopeless for them to enter the land, even though God had led them this far. The people whined, complained, and cried out that it would be better if they went back to Egypt. Really? Really? Yes, really. Joshua and Caleb, though, they tried to encourage the people, listen to what they said. We pass through the land and check it out. It's very good. If the Lord is pleased with us, He'll lead us into that land. It's a land that has plenty of milk and honey. He'll give it to us. But don't refuse to obey Him and don't be afraid of the people of the land. But the people wouldn't listen to Joshua and Caleb. 
Then something truly incredible happened. The glory of God appeared at the tent of meeting. All the Israelites could see it. I bet that count things down in a hurry. God said to Moses directly, How long will these people not respect me? How long will they refuse to believe in me? Moses begged God to have mercy and forgive the people for what they had done, for being scared and for not trusting the Lord. Then God agreed to forgive them. But there was a consequence. God said, Not one of these people will see the land I promised to give them. But my servant Caleb has a different spirit. He follows me with his whole heart, so I will bring him into the land he went to. God would allow Joshua to enter the land as well, just like Caleb. So Joshua and Caleb were the only ones who had the courage to trust God and believe that God would help them enter Canaan. But in the meantime, Joshua and Caleb and the rest of the Israelites couldn't go into Canaan. They had to wait and wander through the wilderness for almost 40 years. Wow, that's a long time. By then, only Joshua and Caleb were still living to lead the new generation, their children, into the land God had promised. When those 40 long years had finally passed, Joshua led the Israelites into Canaan, the promised land. And with God's help, they defeated the city of Jericho. The walls fell down and the Israelites won the battle. If you think about it, it took a lot of courage for Joshua and Caleb to stand up when the other Israelites were starting to panic. These two guys tried to encourage the others to do what God had asked them to do. Enter the land of Canaan, be brave, and they trusted that God was with them. But it was no use because the other Israelites were too scared to listen. Sometimes courage means standing up when other people are afraid. It could mean making the wise choice when others want to make an unwise choice. Remember, you can do what you should even when others are afraid. That's our bottom line for today. That means we need to trust God and live the way God has asked us to live, regardless of what other people do. We can set an example for others by following God and having the courage to do what we should. Now, let us pray. God, thank you for this story that reminds us what it means to have courage. It would have been easy for Joshua and Caleb to go along with the crowd and give in to fear. But instead, they trusted you. They stood up for what they knew was right. God, please help us to do the same thing. Give us the courage to stand up and live the way you've called us to live by loving other people and looking out for what they need. Fill us with your spirit so we can live the way we should, even when others are afraid. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's pop quiz time. I'll ask you some questions and you can shout out loud the correct answer based on the Bible story you just heard. Are you ready? Okay, question number one. What is the real name of the promised land? Is it the land of Canaan? Is it the land of Canaan? Or is it the land of Canaan? You got it! The real name of the promised land is the land of Canaan. Question number two. How many people were sent to explore the promised land? Was it 22 people? Was it two people? Or was it 12 people? Yes, 12 people were sent to explore the promised land. Last question. Who were the two men saying all good and encouraging things about the land? Was it Caleb and Joshua? Was it Carl and Johnson? Or was it Carlos and Jonathan? The two men saying all good and encouraging things about the land was Caleb and Joshua. Did you guess correctly? You all did it. Thanks for playing Pop Quiz with me. Hey IES kids, I am Teacher Patty and it's great to be here again. Let's read the memory verse of this month together. Be strong and brave, 
Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you everywhere you go. Joshua 1 verse 9b. Great! Let's read it together one more time. Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you everywhere you go. Joshua 1 verse 9b. Our Bible verse reminds us of the reason for our courage. God is with us everywhere and anywhere that we need to have courage and make wise choices. You can do what you should even when others are afraid because you're never alone. It might seem that other voices are really loud, like a mean kid calling names or your siblings fighting. There are other loud things in our world like war and sickness and accidents. They make a lot of noise and we might get scared sometimes, but none of those are as strong as God. God is with us and God's voice is the most important. This verse reminds us that God's voice tells us to be strong and full of courage. Keep this in mind, IES kids, and I'll see you next time. Hello, fellow superheroes. Super Len is here to aid you in protecting planet Earth. Before we go on a mission to defeat the enemies, let us study the stuff our superhero friends are using to protect people and display their acts of courage. There will be pictures of items shown to you, and I want you to guess which superhero owns them. Are you ready? Here comes picture number one. Hmm, who owns this? Can you guess? Yes, the answer is Captain America. I have here with me the action figure. Look at that round, shiny shield. So amazing. Next picture. And the answer is Thor, the Thunder Warrior. Next one. Who is the owner of this helmet? Hmm. If you answer Black Panther, you are correct. Yay. Next picture, please. I think I know the answer. Do you? Yes, the answer is Iron Man. It's the reactor machine on his chest. Here comes the next one. Oh, is it a cape? Who wears the cape? Right, the answer is Doctor Strange. What about this one? It's a mask. If you said this mask belongs to Wolverine, you are right. Here's Wolverine. And here comes picture number seven. Another mask. Who possessed this super cool mask? Oh, it's Spider-Man, yay. And now let's see the last picture. Oh, this one is actually not owned by a superhero, but a super villain. And he is really famous. Do you know who? Perfect! It's Thanos! Wow! My fellow superheroes, you guys are really doing great. Your super knowledge and super courage are actually some of your superpowers. Thank you for playing with me, kids. See you next week! It took real courage for Joshua and Caleb not to only face their own fears about the city, but to encourage the rest of their community not to be afraid either. They knew something the other spies had forgotten. God was with them. God had already done so many amazing things for the Israelites' people. What's one city full of giants? God parted an entire sea for them. God fed them from literally nothing. God led them with fire and cloud. There is nothing God can't do. And God was the source of Caleb and Joshua's courage. Have you ever been in a place where others were afraid? Maybe you were in charge of your little brother or sister when a thunderstorm started. 
Maybe you were watching everyone avoid a bully who was picking on a new kid. Those are scary things. Just like God was with the Israelites, God is with you. God can give you the courage to stay calm even in a storm. God can give you the courage to speak up even when others are silent. Ah yes kids, remember that with God's help, you can do what you should even when others are afraid. God bless you all. When I wake up, when I wake up, I know that you are with me every step of the way. You're strong enough, you're strong enough to hang.